Hey, I'm Justin DeJesus. And I'm Alicia Farron. And you're watching Popcorn and Joysticks. <laughs> So today we're bringing you Popcorn and Joysticks episode three. Um, so we're going to do things a little bit differently today. Uh, we do have our show notes in front of us. So if you see us, you know, looking or rearing off to the side, that's why. Um, so we're going to bring you some news, of course, that we maybe didn't cover this week. Maybe you missed it. Uh, maybe you've been watching the channel and we didn't react to it. Whatever the case is, we're going to bring you some exclusive things. <laughs> so... As you all may know, we've heard a lot of rumors about Beetlejuice 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. However, after some thorough research, it looks like it might not be concrete yet. Yeah, uh, it definitely does. And, um, you know, we, we have a quote here that we're going to read to you guys um, that came from Tim Burton himself. Uh, this news was just released about a day ago. Um, mm -hmm. So go ahead and... Uh... So... I have talked to Michael, and I've talked to Winona. I've talked to a few people. It's something that I would really like to do in the right circumstances, but it's one of those films where it has to be right. Yeah. It's not a kind of movie that cries out for a sequel. It's not the Beetlejuice trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something that, if the elements are right, because I do love the character, and Michael is amazing as that character. So, yeah, we'll see, but there's nothing concrete yet. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, you heard it. I mean, a quote from Tim Burton himself uh, from Time Magazine, so. All right. the, oh, i got to say, like, all the fake movie posters yeah. you see <laughs> oh my on gosh. Facebook. Floating around everywhere. Yeah, no. Those are fake. Yeah, yeah very fake. Um, <laughs> and now we know. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we all know, you know, and love the original property. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's even, it's still cool to just see that, you know, if and when it does happen, we know that we, we have them on board, and of course, Tim is going to helm it. So, I mean, that that's just hope right there. But we had to bring it to you guys, let you know it, it, it's a rumor. You know, Winona, um, I think it was about two years ago in an interview. This is actually where the rumor started. Um, she, she actually stated ahead of anything because she was asked, you know, about it. And she said, yeah, that's coming. So right away, after, as soon as she said that, people took that and ran with it. And then, of course, Tim Burton was, was, was uh, interviewed about certain things. And, um, you know, he was quoted saying certain things, but I'm glad that we have finally this, this statement that he just puts all those rumors to rest. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, again, Definitely. it gives us hope for the future, but only time will tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're going to move on to another news topic today, uh, Pacific Rim 2. So, we have finally got a director. Um, it says here that Derek Connolly has been tapped to write the next installment for Pacific Rim um, and of course, the franchise, uh, as we all know that um, Del Toro wanted this to be, is finally going to come to fruition. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, Derek Connolly, if you guys don't know, he's actually the guy that uh, worked on the script or made the script for Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. um, Great movie. Yeah. I, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, too, we also have uh, the director, the Marvel uh, Marvel's Daredevil showrunner. It said Stephen S. D. Knight will direct. So, I mean, we got a lot of news uh, coming out for Pacific Rim, too. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the first Pacific Rim? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, that was, uh, that was a great movie. It was, a, <laughs> yeah, it was an epic, huge spectacle type of film. Um, you know, I remember first hearing about the original property, not really knowing what to expect from it. Um, we knew, you know, from the, from the, uh, the uh, trailers that it was these uh, robots fighting these aliens, which we all know now uh, are the kaiju, uh, and then... Um, you know that that started Charlie Hunnam and Idris Elba, so mm -hmm. it, it was it was an awesome film. Uh, we don't know if those uh, actors are actually coming back for the sequel. Uh, I don't think any casting news has uh, come out yet, but it's great to hear that things are developing um, behind the scenes for this film because I personally love the first one and I cannot wait for the sequel. Yeah, I was actually very late to seeing the first one. I think I saw it like a year or two after it came out. I okay. believe. Um, no words. Yeah, no, but and it was one of those movies like I, eh, I'll catch it later. I'll catch right. it later. And then I watched it. I was like, shit, why didn't why I watch this sooner? Yeah. Oh, and I was so hoping. Yeah, like the, it, it didn't, it didn't do horribly at the box office, but it was, it was supposed to do a lot better than mm -hmm. it did, especially for the amount of money that they spent on the advertising of the film itself. So, um, again, really happy to hear that this is this is coming to fruition. Um, you know, again, as the news comes out, we'll bring it to you guys about that. 
All right, so uh, next thing we have some information for you guys on is the new movie Alien Covenant. Yes. Now, I don't know about you, but I am a huge fan of the Alien series. Um, Ripley's my homegirl. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, she, I, I have the entire series on DVD. I absolutely love it. Um, so it's currently filming right now, and it's actually expected to be um, to come out in uh, August, August the 4th of 2017. Of course, yeah. once again, the director, Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott, yeah. <laughs> who else would do it? Um, and some of the top billed cast, actually, Michael Fassbender, ooh, ooh yeah. Assassin's Creed, as well as Young Magneto oh, yeah. in the X-Men series. Of course, um, he was also in uh, the previous movie, uh, Prometheus, yes. as well. He was the one survivor from the expedition. And for so long, they keep saying, too, that I think even Ridley Scott tried to try to differentiate the Prometheus movie from the Alien series. But now it just seems like him calling it or them calling it Alien and then having the subtitle of uh, Covenant and then having you know the characters mm -hmm. like Michael Fassbender from Prometheus in this, it just it just feels the the rumors even more. Well, well, the whole Prometheus series it's supposed to be um, a prequel. Exactly. Yeah. But there were reports stating that it wasn't, or that it wasn't meant to be, but it turned out to. Uh, it, it's very confusing. I yeah, mean, just a little bit. <laughs> it yeah. really was very confusing. Um, we obviously, as viewers, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way watching it. You're like, no, those are the xenomorphs. That's you know, that's what they yeah. were when they were when they first come out, and it had all of that. So it was kind of like, why would there ever? Why would you ever not think that it was a prequel? Mm -hmm. I don't understand yeah. that, but. Uh, it's exciting to hear this is coming out. Yeah, of course. Uh, another actor, well known, Danny McBride. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, what do we got? Uh, Pineapple Express. Yes. Um, the end. Mm -hmm. Oh my this gosh. Is the, yes. This is the end. Yes. Yes. This is a great movie. Um, and another actor that I am um, well aware of, uh, Billy Crudup. Um, he is uh, from one of my favorite movies, Almost Famous. He okay. played Russell Hammond in the movie, um, so it was kind of it was very interesting to see him in a movie like this. Right. So um, yeah, awesome. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, and of course, as you guys already know, it is a continuation of Prometheus. And see, that's probably why we don't see Bill Sigourney Weaver, which doesn't mean though necessarily that that, that her expedition from the first film won't be. Um, well, because you have to realize too, if it's a prequel, it's gonna eventually lead up to Alien. Yeah. Because they're also talking about making Alien Five. Exactly. So, which I know is just so exciting talking about all this. If you think about it, the the time frame. I mean, the whole Alien series was set like yeah, wasn't it, it was hundreds in the future, of years yeah. in the, in that the is future? True. That is true. Um, and Prometheus, I can't remember what the time frame is on that, or if they even showed. Um, like the year that it is at the time, yeah. but it's possible that um, if you correspond the two, uh, it's clear that Prometheus comes before Alien. Absolutely. However, if any of you guys know about that, be sure to comment down below. Yeah, let us uh, know. Yeah, definitely. Fill us in. Um, All right, so next up, uh, we're going to be discussing Lizzie Borden. Now, this property may sound familiar to you, and that is because uh, about, I believe it was 2012, they had a movie that starred um, uh, Christina Ritchie. Ritchie. Sorry, yeah, Christina Ritchie. It starred Christina Ritchie, um, and she played Lizzie Wait, Borden. Borden. Yeah. Then, I think it was 2014 or 15, Lifetime picked up the series, which was a direct continuation from that film. So, again, it starred uh, Christina Ritchie. Um, this property, though, which is going to also star... Um, Kristen Stewart. My girl. This has actually been in development <laughs> even before those two properties were ever filmed. But because of those properties being filmed, they had to slow and stop production basically. But now we're getting all this news about the film. So again, if it sounds familiar, that is why. Uh, but now, since it's coming out soon, um, we have the uh, director attached to it. Um, the film The Boy, which just came out this past year. Um, the director, Craig William McNeil, he's actually going to helm the psychological thriller. And again, we have uh, starring Kristen Stewart and Chloe uh, Severny, I think. Severny? Severny? I can never say her Severny. name right. <laughs> if you guys know how to pronounce it, I apologize. Just jack that up. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so now we have a director. So again, 
production is going to start, um, you know, being underway soon. And uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, I love the property. I love the, the, the uh, can we call it lore, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we well, know. I mean, it is it's lore because it's rooted in but, actual yeah. myth. Um, however, based off of the of true, true events, story. True yeah, story, true yeah. events. Um, but as you know, I mean, Lizzie Borden, she, she killed her family. Exactly, yeah. Yes. Her she, stepmom or, and her father. Never actually proven. There, There's a lot of speculation <laughs> around it. Right. Um, however, um, this, as the story goes, she, she hacked up her family with an axe. Yes. It doesn't look like we have a release date yet, but we know it's coming. So definitely keep a lookout for that. Uh, again, Lizzie Borden. Um, all right, so we're going to switch gears here now and talk about some uh, news in the gaming world. Star Trek Online. <laughs> Yes, I don't know if um, anyone here has heard about it. I, of course, didn't until thorough research. Um, and you'll actually see some um, screenshots on the screen, um, shots of the game that have been recently released. Um, so, uh, ArcGames.com uh, states that the first major task was to convert a PC game that takes nearly an entire keyboard yeah. to play into a game that or to play into a game that plays well with a 12 button controller. Wow. Yeah. That's a task. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Star Trek Online is actually well into its sixth, sixth yeah. year of showing no signs of stopping, which is great. Which is why it's coming to the next gen, yeah. Yeah, like exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and they're saying that this fall um, it should be launching simultaneously on Xbox One and PS4 consoles. Yeah, so that's awesome. I mean, that's great freaking news i gotta tell you because i love the star trek series i love oh, even yeah. back then when it first you know you had um sir patrick stewart in the role mm -hmm. uh, and i love the new films that have come out recently and then of course we have the new one uh, star trek beyond coming out soon so mm -hmm. i mean just in time for all of this news that and this promotion that's about to come here we are having this game star trek online being released for these uh next gen systems here um, and I think it's perfect timing, and uh, I'm just really excited to play the game. Yeah, no, the game is going to be, I, I'm pretty sure the game is going to be great. However, I was not a big fan of the newer movies. No? No, um, from growing up watching the Star Trek series, um, I have to thank my grandfather for that, as well as my <laughs> uncle, because at first I hated the show. I did right. not want to watch it, but <laughs> after years of being forced to watch right. it, it kind of grows on you. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm not a big, not a big fan of the movies. That I mean, that's my personal opinion, of course. Let us know what you guys thought about the movies. Yeah, obviously, but well, but yeah, Star Trek Online. I think it's going to be a dope game. Um, from what we've seen already from it, um, you know, and what you're seeing on the pictures here, it's it's um, it's Star Trekky. You know, I, mean, yeah. I don't know what other word for it. So it, it, <laughs> and now you're in the world. And um, I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. So next up, we're going to cover uh, Madden 17. Madden 17. I mean, damn, we're already on 17. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about well, it when I'm writing the show notes today, I'm just like, oh, like, there's a lot of Madden well, games. Well, no, it stands for, doesn't it stand for 2017? I know, yeah. How many Madden games are there? But, but um, now we have the Madden 17, and... Um, this is going to actually feature Rob uh, Gronkowski on the cover, so that's pretty. That's pretty dope, and it's pretty big for all yeah. you Ron fans out there. Um, now the first gameplay is available, so you know definitely check that out. So if you guys want to see, because there's a lot of new features in this Madden game. Now I haven't played, let's say, like the past three of them, but I do remember, um, you know, playing it. Uh, I'm trying to remember if it was on Sega Genesis. I can almost guarantee you that I remember playing a Madden game on on Sega. That's how old this goes back, or how far this goes back. Um, but I've definitely played Madden on, uh, was it PS2? I think so. Look, look, look that up. Look that up. <laughs> I'm, I'm really interested to see when it, when it came out now, because I feel like, you look that up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run down a few things here. All right, so a lot of new features here. We have um, offensive characters uh, that you'll be able to access um, to have the new ball carrier controls. Uh, you'll have on-screen props to help prompts, excuse me, to help with the new moves. So um, that's awesome for you guys who play the older games because that wasn't something that was accessible. Uh, I, I remember hearing a lot of uh, you know negative remarks about it not being as accessible. So now they're changing that feature and they're allowing you to have the ball carrier um, controls, and uh, you'll be able to uh, you know have that for all of your players basically. 
Um, also, new path assist option that's going to provide tips on where to move. So that's pretty big too because, I mean, for me personally playing these games before, it was, I mean, I I get it, you know, when, you, when you're um, in the huddle and before you make your play or you start playing, what the hell is it called? Playbook. Though? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so when you're picking your play, I think I said it and didn't even realize it, but, you know, when you're picking your play, um, I get it, but I don't always follow that when I used to play the game. Like, I would pick one thing and, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do a blitz, yeah. or I'm going to do this. And then I never did that. So <laughs> so this will be cool now because now they'll have the assist option to where uh, they'll give you tips on where to move, um, almost like a, a preemptive strike, if you will. You know, It's going to be, a, I think, an awesome, innovative new feature uh, for, for just sports games in general. So I hope that this translates over to other sports games. Now, um, also... Uh, I want you to keep in mind with that, it says here that um, in lower difficulty, the game chooses what special moves it thinks is right. So, uh, you know, unless you're going to you're gonna play on, I guess, normal or higher uh, difficulty, you that might not be uh, accessible to you. Uh, next, though, we do have the defensive players have gap assignments on run plays that should help better cover runners. So now you're talking about putting in uh, artificial intelligence in the game. Basically, okay, you chose to do this move or make this move or do this, and it's going to automatically know and figure out who they need to cover or what's the next step with the uh, computer. So I think that's going to be really awesome and to implement that as well. And you were right. Uh, it was on Sega Genesis. I thought so. As well I as remember. PlayStation 2. Yeah, I remember. Um, however, uh, of course, it looks Look like... Look at that. It went back so far. It went back to 1995. And then lastly, uh, what we have here uh, for Madden 17's new feature, the, uh, the defenders. Their, um, defenders have more awareness of threats to each zone. So that just goes back to the last point there where the AI is going to be implemented here in a way that never has been before. Um, and again, I think this is going to give great gameplay for all the guys that, um, and gals of course, um, that just love the game because it's going to be more interactive. It's going to give you more features to actually... Um, be able to play it a little bit better, I think, because mm -hmm. I played I played a lot a, a lot of sports games like um, NBA and Madden and things like that, mm -hmm. and it kind of feels like the person you pick, you kind of have to be a beast at it, otherwise you kind of suck. And I feel like with these new, <laughs> new features, it's going to give you a, a chance to really um, have fun, even if you're not the best player. We have one more game to cover. Uh, we actually did a reaction to it. Uh, I believe it was earlier this week. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Battlefield One. Um, so everything we know so far. Um, obviously, the setting for Battlefield One is during World War One. It'll take players across an assortment of locations throughout the world. Um, as right now, it's confirmed. The locations are going to include Arabia, the Western Front, and the Italian Alps. Okay. Um, the, the single player game, not many details about the single player game have been announced. Obviously, they want to leave a lot to the imagination. Yeah. Um, multiplayer features, uh, it's first person shooting, yeah. uh, large maps for 64 players, raging battles. Ooh. Oh, yeah. No, that's big. I'm yeah. um, and it's going to be spanning land, air, and sea. So it's going to take you all over the maps. Okay. <laughs> In the water. And above. <laughs> but um, vehicles, weapons, um, vehicles, an assortment of World War One vehicles, which That's is awesome. Cool. They're yeah. keeping it authentic. Um, biplanes, triplanes, naval vessels, uh, boats. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what that was. <laughs> uh, heavy tanks, uh, armored trucks, motorcycles, and horses. Yes. <laughs> Apes on horses. <laughs> Not really. Not really. <laughs> um, okay, uh, weapons. Uh, World War One weaponry. Bald, ac bald action rifles, automatic rifles, semi-automatic semi rifles, um, yes. artillery, flamethrowers. Yes. yes, killer. I just called it. Um, and there's going to be a lot more, obviously. Uh, beta users. Sometime later this year is what we've heard. Um... And you can actually buy registering as a beta or Battlefield Insider for free. You can get access into the beta early. That's yes. <laughs> that is big. Um, set release date for Battlefield 1. Um, it, say, it said the launch uh, October 21st. 
for next gen consoles as well as PC. Awesome. Um, and people with um with an EA origin with EA origin access um can actually get it a little earlier on a, on October or October eighteenth. That's awesome. Yes. That is awesome. I like that they gave us a lot of details about the weapons, about yeah. the vehicles, about you know uh, the different features um, for the game and what we can expect because. I also have played many games to where I I get so excited for it because yeah. it, it comes out and I'm like, yes, yes, continuation, or yes, yes, yeah. I have to play this game. And then I play it and I'm like, what mm. the fuck? Yeah. Why did I waste my money on this? Yeah. So it's good that they, they give us a lot of details on what to expect yeah. from the game. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Um, of course, give us a thumbs up if you liked it. And, um, you know, comment down below. We'd love to hear you guys' reaction, what you thought of uh, the topics we chose today. If you know of any news maybe we didn't cover this week that you'd like to also say and talk about, we'll definitely join the conversation with you. Yeah, uh, give please, it to us. Right? <laughs> uh, please subscribe to our channel. We have a lot more content coming up, and we want to share it with you first. Again, my name is Justin DeJesus. And I'm Alicia Fan. And you've been watching Popcorn and Joysticks. Keep that popcorn popping. And those joysticks rocking.